welcome dear viewers to the video on topic ICH M13A guidance for biofuelant studies and this video will cover the guideline in detail. Earlier I have made a video on ICH M13A guideline which is overview and related to advantages. This video will give you complete understanding about this guidance. Starting with the introduction of this guideline. So it is finalized in July 24 uh, by ICH-M13A and it establishes a harmonized framework for bioequivalent studies and mainly for the immediate release type of formulations which are to be swallowed and which are for the oral route. So this bioequivalence guideline is for immediate release solid oral doses forms and it focus on assessing the pharmacokinetic parameters for B that is bioequivalence and therapeutic equivalence. As we know that assessing the pharmacokinetic equivalence is basic requirement for demonstration of the therapeutic equivalence. So this guideline is related to the pharmacokinetic parameters for bioequivalence. This guideline aims to streamline regulatory processes, aligning the methodologies across global regulatory bodies and this will be a result into producing redundant studies. So mainly the focus is to streamline the regulatory process so that region specific uh, bioequivalent studies will not be more or will be done in some same accordance. So according, according to this guideline, the ICH region and also Europe region, USFDA region, this guideline will serve as a basis. The objective of ICH M13A guideline is to facilitate faster approval of the generic drug products and enhance to essential medicines through regulatory harmonization. So this is the main aim of this guideline to streamline the regulatory processes in the different regions and this will result in the faster approval of generic versions of the innovator products or generic products. And this faster approval will lead to availability of the generic medicines to the public. For understanding the guideline, first we need to understand the basics. First is what is bioequivalence? So, bioequivalence is the study for studying the pharmacokinetic parameters of the test product and then comparing it with the reference product. Bioequivalence studies are done to establish pharmacokinetic similarity between the test product and the reference product. This bioequivalence ensures that generic drug delivers the same therapeutic benefit as the branded product or reference product. B is assessed using the key metrics as AUC and Cmax. So AUC is area under the curve and Cmax is the peak concentration. In simple way, you can say that bioequivalence studies the rate and extent of drug absorption from the GI generally uh, for the test and reference product and the AUC and Cmax are studied. AUC denotes the extent of drug absorption while Cmax denotes the rate of drug absorption. Role of BE study in the generic drug development. So BE testing replaces clinical e efficacy trials making generics more affordable while maintaining the safety and efficacy. Regulatory approval of the generics relies on providing the bioequivalence. So if you are not able to provide the bioequivalence data or if you are not able to pass the bioequivalence studies 
then regulatory approval cannot be granted to such generic products global harmonization for bioequivalence requirements so there are regional variations for the regulatory bodies like fda ema pdma have varying be requirements so as per these guidelines different be studies are to be done or required for the approval of generic product but ICH M13A aims to harmonize these standards and that's why reducing conflicting and redundant studies across the regions so after this guideline all these regions will have to perform the B studies in a similar way key features of M13A standardize the single dose TK studies that is pharmacokinetic studies under both fasting and fed conditions it focus on immediate release oral solid formulations and it make it easy for the market access for pharmaceutical companies by reducing entry barriers in the multiple regions so based on this guideline one study can be extrapolated for the different markets or different regions bioequivalent studies and regulatory impact so study design for the ir formulations or ir products these are generally single dose crossover pk studies performed in fasting and fed state or fasting or fed state b is typically assessed using auc and cmax to ensure the therapeutic equivalence and this is very general statement for the bioequivalent studies that auc and cmax are studied regulatory impact BE is critical for initial generic approval and supports post approval changes that is formulation and manufacturing changes it ensures consistency in drug efficacy and safety study design principles for bioequivalent studies so there are some principles for performing the bioequivalent studies using some specific study design population selection healthy adult volunteers with the age of more than 18 years are to be enrolled for the studies and their bmi should be 18.5 to 30 kg per meter square inclusion exclusion criteria should be based on the health disease and metabolic factors so as we have to enroll the patients or healthy volunteers that time some criteria is enlisted here in this guideline study designs single dose crossover design parallel design multiple dose steady state design are enlisted here single dose crossover design subjects receive both test and refresh product in separate periods parallel design use for drugs with long half lives or when wash out is impractical multiple dose or steady state design for drugs with non linear pharmacokinetics or the drugs which show accumulation another key consideration in the be design is wash out period sampling schedule and dose strength selection wash out period is essential in crossover design to prevent carry over effects and duration of the wash out period should be five times the drug's half life so for example if the drug half life is uh, 20 hours then five times of the half life should be the wash out period sampling scheduling frequent sampling around cmax and long enough to estimate aus for the absorption extent so this is very important requirement that we should do sampling uh, for some more times or frequent times near to cmax considering the tmax of the formulation or tmax of the drug dose strength selection so generally highest marketed strength is selected and typically used for better sensitivity but lower doses may also be used with pk proportionality and also drug molecule safety to be considered then ph dependency in the bioequivalent studies this is very important 
uh, information for the drugs with variable absorption at different pH levels in the GI tract. Some APIs show pH dependent solubility and they show variable absorption as, as per the different pH levels in the GI tract. So gastric pH and pH modifying excipients like proton pump inhibitors or antacids have impact onto the drug absorption. So this pH dependent solubility uh, APIs when formulated those formulations should be studied for this pH dependency in the bioequivalent studies. Impact on absorption. Drugs with pH dependent solubility may require additional pH studies when taken with pH modifying agents, especially in the patients with conditions like achlorhydria. Achlorhydria is a condition in which the stomach produces less acid. Addressing the pH dependency in these studies, in vitro and in vivo testing is recommended and in vitro dissolution testing under various pH conditions to evaluate the drug release. Use of PBPK models to simulate how pH variations affect absorption and thus helping to predict B outcomes and reducing the need for extensive studies. Special considerations. Fasting and fed conditions may not suffice when assessing B for pH dependent drugs. So, additional studies may require when pH modifying excipients or salt forms are involved in the formulations. Coming to the documentation and reporting in the B studies. So, key elements in the B documentation are study protocol, PK data and certificates of the analysis. Study protocol provides the details on methodology, inclusion exclusion criteria, dosing schedules and the washout periods. PK data provides concentration time profiles, raw data and statistical analysis. COA to be generated for test and reference product. Compliance with the regulatory requirements. So to ensure trans transparent reporting of, of deviations from protocol and justification for their impact onto the study integrity. So this documentation and reporting is very critical part of any B study. Now we will see what are the challenges in the B studies and what are the future directions. Challenges involve variability in PK parameters that may be because of the metabolism and genetics can obscure B studies. Then one of the most important challenge is handling outliers and protocol deviations which can be tricky and must be documented properly. Then fasting versus fed conditions and other study complexities complicate the design. Future trends Adaptive B study designs allow modification based on interim results. So adaptive B designs are very important to understand and I will make a video on this adaptive B designs. So that time uh, I will try to make you understand about these designs. Incorporation of personalized medicine and pharmacogenomics in the B studies. Advancement in the PBPK modeling and the use of virtual B simulation to reduce in vivo testing. So PBPK modeling can be used to generate the information regarding the in vivo behavior of the formulation. So in conclusion we can say that bioequivalent studies are fundamental for ensuring that generic drugs are both therapeutically equivalent and safe to the reference product. Regulatory harmonization via ICHM13A will simplify approval process and this will reduce the multiple B studies and increase access to affordable medicines. As pharmaceutical science evolves, advanced modeling and personalized medicines will continue to shape the study requirements, improving the uh, efficiency, accuracy and regulatory approval of the drug products. So this was the overview of ICH M13A guidance and I hope 
you will get good information for this guidance. This guidance is published by ICH and also by the USFDA. I hope you might like this video and you will understand the overview of overview for the guideline. Also, uh, in the upcoming time, I will make more elaborative video for these guidelines. Thank you.